Hey guys, what's up? Today we're looking at finding the critical points of a function and we want to classify those critical points depending on the second derivative test. So we want to find the critical points and to find the critical points, the first thing we do is we set the gradient of the function equal to the zero vector. So basically that just means set each partial derivative of f equal to zero. So f sub x is going to equal by the product rule, derivative of the first is just 1 times the second, which is 1 plus xy, plus the first, x plus y, times derivative of the second with respect to x, which is y, and set that equal to 0. And same thing for fy. Set the derivative equal to 0. So differentiate with respect to y, we get 1 times 1 plus xy plus the first x plus y times derivative of the second with respect to y which is just x. Alright so we've got the partials we set them equal to zero now what can we do? What we can do is we can say both of these are equal to zero so we can equate them 1 plus xy plus y times x plus y should be equal to 1 plus xy plus x times x plus y. So that is our equation that we can derive here. Since they're both equal to 0, we can equate them. Now what can we do? We can cancel out some terms here. So there's some terms that cancel. Um, this term we can get rid of that parentheses, like the whole parentheses there. That'll go away. So that'll tell us that y times x plus y should be equal to x times x plus y. Now there are two possibilities here. If we could, we could cancel this x plus y term in parentheses, but that only is true if that term is not zero. So the first thing that could happen is x plus y is equal to zero. So if x plus y is equal to 0, that would tell us that y would be equal to negative x. Alright, so that's the first thing that, that could happen. Now, if it's not equal to 0, then we could cancel it. The second thing that could happen then is y equals x. So we've got two, um, we've got, uh, two variables, and we want to get rid of one of them now. So in both cases, we have y solved in terms of x. So now take these two and sub back into either one of these top equations. So sub each case into the equations up here to solve for x or for y. All right, so case one is y equals x. If we sub y equals x into the first equation where we set the partial f sub x equal to zero, we would get one plus x squared plus x plus x times x equals 0. So that would be the equation 1 plus 3x squared equals 0. Or we could rewrite that as 3x squared equals negative 1. But this equation has no real solutions because we have x squared equals a negative number, so no real solutions. So actually y equals x um, isn't really a case that we need to consider because it gives us an imaginary solution. So the case we need to focus on then maybe, case 2, is when y equals negative x. So y equals negative x, then we could figure out, let's plug that in to this first equation. So we get 1 minus x squared plus, and then parentheses, x minus x times negative x equals 0. So these two terms are going to cancel here. It's going to be a 0. So we don't really even need that term. So we get the equation 1 minus x squared equals 0 or x squared equals 1. So that tells us x equals plus or minus 1. Well, if x equals 1, y equals negative x, then negative 1 is the y value. And then if x equals negative 1, y equals positive 1. 
So those are our two um, critical points. So let's do the second derivative test on the critical points here. To do the second derivative test, we need the partial derivatives fxx. And that's going to be the second derivative of f with respect to x. So let's differentiate fx with respect to x. So we'll get y plus, and differentiate this with respect to x, we just get y. So actually we just get 2y for fxx. Now let's look at fxy. Differentiate fx with respect to y, we would get x plus, and do a product rule here. So derivative of the first would be uh, 1 times uh, y plus, and then derivative of the second is 1 times x plus y. Actually, fxy is 2x plus 2y. And that's going to be the same as fyx. So fyx is actually the same because the partials are continuous. Clairaut's theorem tells us that they're the same. And then fyy, differentiate f sub y with respect to y. We're going to get x plus x, which is 2x. So the discriminant we know is the determinant fxx, fxy, and if they're continuous, which they are, it's fy, fxy down here, and then fyy. So what we want to do is evaluate the discriminant at these critical points, and that'll tell us whether we have a max, min, or saddle. So the discriminant at 1, negative 1, plug in x equals 1 y equals negative 1. So it'll be negative 2, and then negative, let's see, this would be 2 minus 2, 2 minus 2, and then 2x down here in fyy is going to be 2. So this discriminant is equal to negative 4, which is less than 0. So the second derivative test, let's go back and look at what the second derivative test tells us. All right, so what the second derivative test tells us, it tells us if the discriminant is greater than 0 and the um, fxx is greater than 0, then we got a min. It's like the curvature going up. We got a positive curvature, that'd be a min. Um, and the discriminant greater than 0 and the curvature is negative, that's a max. So we got something curving down. And actually, it would also be the true for fyy being less than 0 if fxx is less than 0 while d is greater than 0. And then if d is less than 0, we would have to have a saddle point. So that's the, that tells us this point, negative, or 1, negative 1, is a saddle point. All right, so let's also check d of negative 1, 1. All right, so d of negative 1, 1 would equal plug in x equals negative 1, y equals positive 1. So that'd be 2, negative 2 plus 2, negative 2 plus 2, and then 2. Just negative 2 down here. So this is going to equal negative 4, less than 0. So that tells us as well that negative 1, 1 is a saddle point. So they're actually both saddle points in this example.